Well, good morning. Our entrance antiphon, your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today the church remembers St. Peter Claver. He lived in the 16th century as, and is known as the slave to the Negroes and his service to them. To prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we begin acknowledging our need for the Lord acknowledging our faults, our failures, and asking the good Lord for his strength, mercy, and healing for ourselves and for the people of the whole world. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness, Christ of mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Peter Claver a slave of slaves, and strengthened him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help, grant through his intercession that seeking the things of Jesus Christ, we may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever, and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of a kind not found even among pagans, a man living with his father's wife. And you are inflicted with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this did should be expelled from your midst. I, for my part, although absent in body, but present in spirit, have already, as it if present, pronounced judgments on the one who has committed this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you have gathered together, and I am with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan, for the destruction of his flesh, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate. Do, do you not know that a little yes leavens all the do? Clear out the old yes, so that you may become a fresh batch of do, in as much as you are unliving. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the faith, not with the old years, the years of malice and wickedness, but with the unliving bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. For you, O God, delight not in the wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evil doers. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You destroy all you 
speak falsehood, the bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exult forever. Protect them that you may be the joy of those who love your name. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, Come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he then said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, one who imitated our Lord and felt compassion for those who suffer is the saint that we remember today, Peter Claver. He was born into a working class family in Spain. He became a Jesuit in 1602 and inspired by others, he wanted to serve as a missionary in a new world. He was sent to Cartagena, Colombia in 1610 and was ordained a priest six years later. At the time, Cartagena was a major center for the African slave trade. And with others, Peter devoted his energies to the spiritual and physical care of the slaves, bringing them food, medicine, and other necessities. He also used interpreters and pictures to educate the slaves about Christianity and to prepare them for baptism. It is said that he baptized more than 300,000 converts in his lifetime. He tried as best as he could to follow his flock into the mines and the plantations where he continued to intercede for them and to look after the material and their spiritual welfare. Claver often confronted angry opposition from business and civil authorities who suspected that his ministry was undermining their lucrative commerce. In 1650, Claver was struck by an outbreak of the plague. He survived, but he was physically helpless. He remained in his cell, virtually alone, and in a shocking state of neglect. He died on September 8th in 1654. The city and the church which had treated him with some reserve, if not disdain, now competed to honor his memory. Peter called himself the slave of Negroes. In 1888, Pope Leo XIII named him patron saint of all missionary activities among Negroes. 
May the compassion of Christ as lived out in Peter Claver inspire us to live with love and compassion towards one another. Let us pray. Let us pray then for the success of the Pope's visit to the people of Papua New Guinea, for a deepening of faith and of friendships, especially among members of different religions. We pray to the Lord that our leaders may help us build a society where all can live in peace and prosperity. We pray to the Lord for an end to modern-day slavery, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and all whom we have promised our prayers, we pray to the Lord. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of George Fox. So for him, for all who have died, and all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord and for your intentions. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you who are kind to the sinner, hear the prayers of your children, and in your goodness, grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Peter Claver, so that as you brought in him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Peter Claver you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, 
and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praises without end. We acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember George Fox and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With one heart and one faith together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
led us off to each other with signs of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. communion antiphon blessed is the servant whom the lord finds watching when he comes 
Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Peter Claver, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.